ready? Woo! S D P P P. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. If you were gonna give Rasmus Dahlin an extension, mm. oh. What would you give him? And do not look at your computers. Oh! Can I go to Cap Friendly? You cannot. Oh shit! I want to do shit. Terrible. Got a little. Can bit I go to Hockey DB? News. You can go to Hockey DB. Okay. You can't look at any news. I need. I need stats. Can you? While you're doing that, can you also turn my headphones down? Because. Man, Noxie Break. and Cax like their headphones. Like yeah, they, yeah. they jacked it. You're yesterday. splitting. Yeah, can yeah, you can yeah. you turn down mine down? Too? Thank Phrasing. you. Phrasing, but also Damn. yeah, along with breaking news, breaking eardrum. That's right. Let's Is that go. good? Yeah. yeah, and breaking news, by the way, for Nazi and Cax, because they obviously uh, had a pretty damn good show yesterday. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to talk about the PWHL uh, in, a, in a little bit here, but I just wanted to ask you guys. I just want... I'm actually surprised as former GM of the Buffalo Sabres, Jesse yeah. Blake, isn't just firing a number. All, all I need is how many years would you give him? How much money would you give him? What do you think is fair? 23 years old. Mm-hmm. I got the hockey to be open. Yeah. 23 years old. Left... Shooting defenseman. Yeah. Right. First overall pick. First overall pick in 2018. I mean, at 23, you'd like an eight-year contract. Quick trivia. Yeah. How many points did Rasmus Dahlin have last season? He started real hot. Um, 75. Well, 75. you already flashed it on the screen, so I know. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, no, Matty added it up. Quick I'll trivia. Good, I'll, I'll give you the it. answer. No. I missed it. No. <laughs> it's like one of those EQAO tests. It's like, we're going to give you the answer anyway. But I never understood open book tests. I didn't get that either. Oh, the, what? It's just so you learned how to take notes for university. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. anyway. It was, what was it? Three standardized tests in four years yeah. for Ontario students? That's right. That's, and none of them mattered. That's too much. Um, 73 so, points. 73 points. A lot oh! of points. Yeah. That was pretty close. Nine, nine million. Maddie, can you also open the door, please? Because it's going to boil in here, and I'm going to be as red as a tomato like I was on last episode. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jesse is this. convinced. There you go. Jesse yeah. is convinced that this does not help the air conditioning situation. In I think it'll studio. be it'll be hot either way. It's, it is. <laughs> it's ripping hot. I think it'll I help. Had it, I had it down to like 18 degrees for you coming in. Thank you. It was pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, just once you turn on all these lights and all the cameras. and And it's also, you know, it was... So uh, picking up Everly yesterday from school, she was like drenched in sweat. Like it's just it's just hot. It's just a freaking hot week, man. Yeah, but you know what? It's easier for the teachers. Definitely easier. Um, okay, so nine point two school. by eight. You say nine point two million by eight. Give it to him. I am red as a tomato already. Go ahead. See, <laughs> I think some of those contracts that we signed, uh, we saw signed about a year ago, like uh, Warensky, Makar. Uh, I think it's going to screw over guys like this, unless. Mm-hmm. Is Rasmus Dahlin part of the double digit club? He could be. Is would you give him that? Well, it's tough because you're gonna have Owen Power in pretty short order as well. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say he I'm gonna say he signed eighty million dollars. Eight times ten. You would be this is the rumor. You would be closest. Eight years, obviously. Yeah. Ten and a half million is the rumor. Ten and a <laughs> half as this wow. as of this recording. And by the way. Um, as a team that's used to contracts like that, we've been used to contracts like that for half a decade here in Toronto. It sure has. Um, he's worth it. I think he's worth it. So again, and he's worth it. He's especially worth it to the Sabers. But I think on any team, this is—he's an all-star defenseman. I don't know what else you got to say. I think kudos to the Sabers for being the first team to really kind of take—not mm, even really. I was going to say really take the plunge mm-hmm. um, when it comes to. Um, we, we, we talked about it when, when Matthew signed, uh, his extension, the cap is going up. Mm-hmm. Signing a longer deal does not make the cap hit go down anymore. It used to be the case. Yeah. Not the case anymore. Yep. It's going to make it go up mm-hmm. 10 and a half for Darlene based on what guys got a year or two ago is wildly too high. <laughs> Rasmus Darlene based on how much the cap is going to go up. Over the next eight years, that is uh, well, a perfectly reasonable and cap. Hit. If you can look at cap friendly, Jesse, is his his contract isn't even up yet. I don't think. Uh, Darlene's current contract. Uh, I was Who's the rumor from? Is he I was looking at uh, comparables. Oh, I'll open a second. Report. One second. Six million dollars. Uh, twenty twenty four is when it expires. So his extension would be after this coming season. That's yeah. when it would kick in. That's a great deal. Oh, so he's eligible to sign an extension right now. Yeah, yeah. That's a great deal. Why didn't we talk about it all summer? <laughs> like, do you, do you see how the Leafs get like? What the the Ducks don't have Zegras signed? Yeah, he was their top scorer. 
Why aren't we all freaking out about that every day, all day? We're so, not Ducks fans. Can I explain my logic in the 9.2 and yeah. where I thought that would land? Because sure. Kale McCarr is $9 million. That contract fucking rules. Yeah. Adam Fox is 9.5. Also yeah. good. Split the difference, 9.2. But the thing is, is that the difference now is the context has changed. Those were signed last year. Yeah. Now we know that the salary cap's going up. Eight or nine million dollars over the next couple of years. It's going up almost an entire Kale McCarr contract. So, Damn. and that's in the next two. That's that's you know after this season and next season, free agency is going to be fun again. I, I believe this makes uh, Darlene the third Sabres defenseman to ever make double digits. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, see, I see you making your face. Hold on, not Tyler Myers. Tyler Myers. No. Yeah. So I, I I always bring this stat up. I love this stat. Uh, this was never their cap hit. But oh, just a real salary. money. Real money. The Sabres had the highest paid defenseman in the league in back-to-back years, and it was two different guys. Okay, so Myers is obviously one of them. Tyler Myers. Let me think. It, 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 it's obviously couldn't be Bogosian's no, I'll deal, give you, which I'll was even long. give you the nationality. You won't get it. German. Was it? Hold on. Was it? Def, it was defenseman? Defenseman. Uh, His first name was Christian. I have no. <laughs> exactly. What? Christian Erhoff. Oh, I remember Christian Ehrhoff. Uh, yeah, 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 you remember him, but he was the highest paid defenseman in the league one year. Wow. Yeah, Sabres weren't good. For yeah, him. honestly, I like what? this deal a lot for the Sabres, man. This is a this keeps him. He's what is he? Twenty three now. He'll be twenty four when it kicks in. Mm-hmm. He's there till he's thirty two. Right. So it this contract takes him to where like just a hair over where Matthews' contract takes him to. Right. So mm-hmm. you kind of see not to make it about the Leafs, but it is relevant. Um, well, anytime a double digit contract is signed, it's relevant to the Leafs. Yeah. I don't think we have to explain that. Well, like people were upset that Matthew's contract that he just signed was not eight years. No, that doesn't make any sense. The contract before it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I get the anger about that. I, yeah. I get it. You should have. He, he, you wish it was eight years. It was five. Fine. I get it. Um, when you're 23 and you have a chance to lock a player up, you do it. Um, if they're a star like Darlene is, you do it. That's why I think the Devils are basically going to be in Stanley them. Cup contention I for hate a them. They're going to be amazing. Can I give you some other numbers? Like, their that, their cap situation is unreal. That puts the Darlene number into a little bit more perspective because Quinn Hughes is 23, 7.8. Mm. Well, he's going to be signing his third contract, though, when mm-hmm. his is up. Yeah, when it expires. We oh, got- so is Darlene. Sorry. <laughs> we got Heiskinen, who is 23 as well, oh. 8.4. Heiskinen's only eight, uh, only 23? Yeah. It feels like he's been in the NHL for 10 years. He's so He's one he's of the unreal. most underrated players. Zach Wierenski, who's 25, is 9.5. Yeah. And that was, like, high. That was like the Columbus tax. And last one, Charlie McAvoy, who's 25, is 9.5. So Darlene's passing everybody. Except for Dowdy and Carlson. Yeah, but he's going to get leapfrogged in very short order. Except, except, like, all these players who we expect to be in the Norris conversation every year, like a Fox, like a Makar, locked up. Mm-hmm. All That's locked why up. I'm like, when, I think this might last for a little bit longer than we think. Yeah, it's possible. I'm trying to think of who might pass him. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the number one guy I think could pass him is Owen Power. But um, he uh, he didn't. Owen play. Power also the one thing the Sabers did right here is that they're able to look at Owen Power and say, "Listen, it took him two contracts to get there." Yeah. Now yeah. Owen Power might say, "That's cool, shove it up your ass," <laughs> like all the Leafs RFA's did to them. Yes. Uh, well, no one's taking a discount, so I'm going to continue to make my life more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Purely on the ice. <laughs> Off the ice, my life is infinitely easier. Now. Yes, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think I think if if you're Kevin Adams, that would be the argument you would make. It's a flimsy one, mm-hmm. but it does seem to work sometimes. No, it's a, listen, so the rumor is 10 and a half? That's the rumor. Any dollar under 10 and a half, I think, makes it a pretty good contract. I think it's a good deal no matter what. You got it. Uh, you, you've got a defenseman who, at least for my money, uh, is better than for, for like the team that I cheer for. He's better than any Leafs defenseman in the oh, past yeah. thirty years. 
Uh, he uh, passed thirty years, maybe even longer. Outside of Salming, who's better? Like, well, and Salming was more than thirty years ago. Yeah, no, the the Leafs, uh, <laughs> the Leafs history of defenders is not great. Um, no, uh, I, I don't know if there was a more improved player in the league last year. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's in the conversation, top ten most improved player in the league last year. Um, it's a smart move. We should have been talking about it all summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I I have to say though, I, I didn't even know they, they, like, the Nylander discourse has kind of died down, though. Don't you think? Yeah, because oh, yeah. no one was worried. Okay, it's, can, can I be an asshole? No one was worried about Willie. They were worried about Austin. They were worried about Austin. They were worried about Willie because they thought Austin getting done was contingent on Willie getting done. Leaf fans discovered where their priorities are. Austin. Well, yeah. I I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, They got the right priorities. You're all right. You're all correct. He's one of the best centers in the entire NHL, one of the best goal scorers in the NHL. Um, Now, the further we get or the closer we get to next summer i think they'll have far less chill about it yeah the, especially depending on how the season plays out depending on how you the know. season plays own out. own rental oh. adam's least favorite oh, term the in the stupidest world stupidest term oh, own God. rental it's like you know the oh, the closest thing you can get to an own rental is if somebody's been injured the entire year and they're coming back for the playoff run and their contracts expired that to me feels like a trade deadline acquisition you didn't have to pay for although you did pay real dollars but if they've been playing for you your own, your entire year, you're not improving your team by not making a move. Like I, I it just it just boggles the mind. And if you go back, um, well, he wants to be a Leaf Adam. Who Nylander? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask you guys about that. Mm-hmm. I want La- last thing on Darlene and the you were saying they're coming up. Um, Heiskanen's signed through 20, uh, 29. Oh. At that 8.4. Oh, my God. And, um, I mean, it's still eight and a half million, but... Right. Whoa. And Quinn Hughes is signed till 2027. So so those two young guys who are on his same level who will get the big next contract, they're locked up. All these teams that uh, signed those defensemen like a year or two ago, whatever it was, they traded in like basically one or two years of pain for half a decade of wicked <laughs> contracts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wicked contract. Uh, how, how do you how bad do you, timing for Buffalo? Uh, yeah. You think it's bad timing? No, no. Like if if they could have gotten this like last year, like say, uh, oh, you say, mean say Rasmus Dahlin's parents do the whoopee a couple couple months earlier, <laughs> then like Buffalo's sitting pretty right now. Do, do the whoopee? They I get, think I think he means they watch Sister Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sister Act 2 was also very good. Mm. Very underrated. That's a movie joke, kids. It's a uh-huh. Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> joke. If his contract comes up uh, like previous last or last season, he's able to sign a, a $9 million deal and he's till 2029 or whatever it is. Like Buffalo is even better position. But yeah, I don't disagree that it's a good deal. Yeah. they. I mean, the second contract he signed, it would have been better to get a longer term deal. But mm-hmm. you also didn't know he was this good. Right. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's a good point. I point. remember, wasn't it even the beginning of last year we were like, oh, Darlene can't defend. That feels like it'll become an issue at some point. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he went on, didn't he score in 10 straight games? And, mm-hmm. and uh, he greatly improved uh, his defense. He's a great player, man. Yeah. Great player. I, I, um, I wanted to ask you this. And the Nylander thing. That I, I well, the Nylander thing, I, wanna, I, wanna, I do want to talk about, but the, with the Matthews thing, immediately... Like before the contract was even announced, because Matthews put out the, the the Twitter statement a little early before, like we were tweeting, we were we were sharing the tweet in our group chat with the CJ show, and uh, I'm like, this looks like an extension tweet, and then Julian's like, yeah, it does look like an extension tweet, and then the extension was, I think, announced maybe ten minutes later. Can you imagine if it wasn't? I know. <laughs> He's like, I just want to be here. Love it here. That's um, just wanted to say that. I had a I had a stake at uh, Harbor Sixty, and I just wanted to. Reiterate how much I love it here. <laughs> anyway, ta. Um, it's funny how that that contract had to be accompanied with that statement because Lee fans needed to hear it. And I want to push this back to the now head of the PWHL uh, Players Association, Brian Burke, who said on Sportsnet 590, the fan five years ago or six years ago it was pre-pandemic. That's all I know that Austin Matthews was going to leave as soon as the contract was done. It was probably right around the time he signed the extension with Dubas. Mm-hmm. 
and he was going to go back to Arizona. That statement in various forms has stuck in Leaf fans' heads ever since. And it's fascinating that I, I think, like, I mean, it's nice that Austin loves Toronto. That's that's great. I, I would imagine that that's assumed. If you're signing to stay in a city that you're not from for five years, I would assume you like it there. Usually I, that's my assumption. I think almost but, every Leaf loves it here. But Leaf fans needed to hear it. And they knew that. Like, the, his PR team, the Leafs, um, uh, Austin's agent, they all knew that. And I think it all harkens back to Brian Burke... Literally, for some people, ruining their day, their week, their month, several years of Austin Matthews hockey just going, well, he's probably going to leave. And what was interesting is when that contract was signed, you know, we did our, we did our little, uh, we did our, you know, our bonus episode. And all I saw for the next few days was, wow, but uh, what happens when he's 32? And Do like, you not live cares? your life that way? Yeah, who cares? Stop. <laughs> who cares? Stop it. I, and, and listen, I love Austin. I want good things to happen for him, and I want them to happen here, and I would love for him to be a lifetime Leaf. But that is for down the road. And it just I found the whole thing fascinating. And I wonder, I think the William Nylander extension, the more they think about it, yeah, $10 million, blah, 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 that's what you want. I think William Nylander is an $8.5 million player at this point. And I think if he signs an extension in that range, I'm going to be perfectly happy with it because I think he's a spectacular hockey player with warts. Uh, I think he's got some game some game issues, um, and he's not the perfect all around player that that you know maybe Austin Matthews feels like he is when he's Sometimes. you know fully healthy Most or Mitch Marner time. too. Yeah. Um, and the reason I say this, I, I'm making this belabored point because is William Nylander's extension also going to be followed up with a press statement? Do Toronto Maple Leaf fans now need to hear like when David Comp signed his extension? I don't think he said, I don't think he put out a press release. Do we need to hear from our star players that they like it here? Do we have that much of a syndrome where we feel like everybody hates it here? And is that our own self-loathing? Leaf fans, I think this, I think this one might be us. I think this one might be us. We need to chill. I think we need to chill. L listen to the conversation we just had. We went the whole summer without knowing the Buffalo Sabres best defenseman was even eligible for an extension and we're sitting here worrying about the Leafs second best right winger stop stop let's enjoy life where do you see yourself five years from now enjoying life I hope five years from now it's a long time you don't have enough power to know where you're going to be five years from now what was five years ago that's 2018 my friends 2018 Brian Babcock Burke said, was still the coach. Brian Burke said it on August 26, 2019. He said uh, he believes Matthews will leave Toronto in five years. Almost it was exactly 2019, four years yeah. ago. Yeah. Four years ago, yeah. He said it on primetime sports. That is, that comment. A show that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, yeah, I know. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's not a shot at them. No, they that's have a YouTube channel. Shit changes, man. <laughs> shit changes. Five years? Yep. Stop it. It shook people. It sh it's it's perfect sports radio. It's what it's supposed to do, right? It's supposed to get inside your head. He got right. inside people's heads. And at the way. time, the day after Austin Matthews, I don't know if it was the day after, but like that week, uh, early September. So the next week, Austin Matthews actually responded to what Brian Burke said. He said, we haven't even started my first year. And then this, I think it's just August. There was nothing going on. Why not spark up a controversy? How better to do that than to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs? It's a little disappointing because it's so far away and there's other stuff that could be talked about rather than that. Obviously, you can talk about what you want to talk about. Obviously, it creates controversy and will get you a lot of clicks. But it's not really something that bothers me or that I look at because I'm just looking at today and this season and doing the best I can. I love playing in Toronto. It's unbelievable. It's the best city to play in the NHL. Our fans are amazing. So, so can we take a moment then? to use this as an example why we shouldn't let these things bother us. Yeah, Austin Matthews had to say that four years ago, and now we're still talking about it. You had to say that four years ago. A, he's re-signed here. B, where do you see yourself in five years? The Coyotes don't have a building! They don't have an arena, man! And we were worried about, oh gosh, he's gonna go to... And then, did you see how quickly we all went from, okay, well, the Coyotes aren't a viable possibility, but then he's going to go to the Rangers of the Kings. 
<laughs> He's going to go to the Rangers or the Kings. Two teams with a, with actually four walls and a roof. Oh, my God. Guys, you have one life. Yeah. You can't spend your one life vibrating, worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. What if we did, though? Well, you know, there's another option. So I'm I'm curious when 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 Neilander's extension gets done because the more I think about it, the more I feel like it is going to get done. Um, I've had. I don't care sleep. if it does or doesn't. I've had a nice That's summer. How I'm living my life. I've I'm... had a nice summer away from it to go. I think it's going to happen. I feel like this is. It's one of those things. Like I, I'm curious to see what kind of press release they put out when that happens. Uh, I'm the curious other thing, to see if he leaves. If they replace him with another hockey player, I we, bet they will. We did not get the chance to chat about, although you did do a video about um, Sheldon Keefe's extension. Oh, I thought you were going to say Simone Benoit. No, no, we'll talk about Simone Benoit. We will. Um, no. Okay. Uh, only if he makes the team. <laughs> so I, I think there was a lot of, there was a lot of okay with this. Like it was one of the most mid things to happen for the Leafs this summer. And the reason I wanted to bring it up was I, I don't know if I ever... We, we never really even got the chance to chat about it, the three of us. Like, off the air. Yeah. So, two extra years beyond this one. What did you guys think? So, you, you know how the, the argument becomes... Here, here's what the argument becomes. I, I talk about wanting Leafs. Again, this is the team that I cheer for, so that's, that's why I got to talk about the Leafs. Mm -hmm. Wanting Leafs to take a discount. Yep. Because there is a salary cap... And I want the Leafs to win. So I worry about every dollar and cent that the Leafs spend on a player and what that player demands because it directly affects the results on the ice. Mm -hmm. Is there a salary cap on coaches? No. Well, I don't give a shit. No. That's hey, good for him. And, he, and, and if they fire him and they set money on fire... And by set money on fire, you know what the funny thing about that? It's illegal to set money on fire. So what they actually do is they give it to Sheldon Keefe. And guess what? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a... Good. Fine. Jesse? You can't oh, have a sorry. lame duck coach. No, you can't. Now they don't have a lame duck coach. Right. Yep. They have Scrooge McDuck money. Yep. Do whatever you want with your gold doubloons. <laughs> okay. You are to our giant telecom masters at MLSC. Jesse, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the extension doesn't really mean anything because they can always just fire him at any moment and just pay him out the contract. It was It's more of a, hey, we don't want this to be a story in the media, so we'll give him uh, a couple of years so that everybody's not sitting there wondering, hey, is my coach getting fired? What's happening with Shelton Keefe? So they give him the extension, and then if they want to fire him, they do. It, it, we didn't talk about it because it didn't really mean anything. It doesn't. You know, you look at it, and you're like, oh, the extension, it's just paper. If he wins, he's, he's in. Paid. If he wins, he's in. The if he doesn't win, he's not. For Sheldon Keefe, it's awesome. Oh, I get money wicked. for three years. I get well, two extra years. I get money. I know I get this money, but like everybody else, it's it, we're just thinking about the Leafs and if he's going to be coaching the Leafs, and we don't know if he's going to coach the Leafs past this year because the extension doesn't mean jack shit when you just pay it out. Bruce Boudreaux signed on today as an advisor to the Niagara Ice Dogs. I'm just throwing that out there. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. So he's Southern Ontario. Whoa! Oh. Yeah, he's, no, he's hanging Whoa. close. He's just he's just There's jobs together. in the area. Yep. You know what's great is if he signed with any OHL team, you could have said that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but the Ice Dogs have got him. Um, uh, we also we didn't touch yesterday on uh, the tragic pass passing of Rodian Amirov. Um, unbelievable. Uh, the outpouring of support uh, on not just here in in Toronto but all around the world, especially in you know in Russia and 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 what I really loved. Uh, was the current Leafs players. Specifically, I remember Tavares had a really nice tribute. I think Marner had a really nice tribute. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like this guy was beloved. Yeah. Last year, um, they had him on the bench for the, I think it was the home opener. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, that's such a nice gesture. That's really cool. And, you know, they're getting him in the organization. And that's a sign that, you know, things are going well. Yeah. And I guess, I guess I looked at that maybe the wrong way, but um, try to find a picture of Rodi on Amirov not smiling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, you would have never known anything was wrong uh, because he didn't let you, uh, he didn't let you see him falter uh, at all. Stayed strong throughout it all. And um, I mean, I really, I, I can't wrap my head around something that tragic. You know what I mean? I cannot, like, I think of where I was at when I was, how old was he, 21? 
Yeah. I, I try to wrap my head around that. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't do it. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I try not to think about it. Um, Bobby Bond also passed this year uh, yeah. or this summer. Yeah. And you have a story with Bobby. Well, I, I have a couple. Um, Which is cool to say. I have a couple stories with the guy that broke his leg and won the cup. Yeah, well, and so, he's in this tragically hip song. It, that's right. He was a uh, well. He was a local hero um, out in Ajax because uh, that's where he resided. And I was lucky enough to bump into his family for uh, for uh, a second story. But the the first one, um, he held. Uh, I thought it was a book signing. Um, but I went back and it was actually a fundraiser where he just happened to be no. selling books and then donating the proceeds. But, um, I believe it was for cancer research. Um, and I, I sat down for him and I got to ask him 20 minutes worth of questions. Um, and just a treasure trove of old stories and you can still find it on, I, th- I think it was the It's It's from like nine years ago. And I took a photo of him, really proud of, you know, the, the old school Bobby Bond smile. And uh, he, was, he was signing his books and I was like, you know what? This isn't professional, but I don't care. Uh, I'm going to get one of his books. So I lined up and the guy in front of me got the last book. And he looks up and he sees I'm the only person left in line. And he sees he has no books left, but he's like, oh, it's you like I have, I have books at my house and I was like, Oh, okay. Like I didn't know what that meant. And like, he's like, well, just come to my house. Wow. I was like, what? Okay. So we arranged it like two or three days later and I'm driving on the street and I'm trying to figure out which one is Bobby Bond's house. And, oh, it's the one with Bobby Bond washing his van in the driveway. <laughs> 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 he was just washing his car and, uh, oh, yeah, 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 you know, he, he invites me in his house, um, invites me into his kitchen. His cat is on the kitchen table. Oh, get out of here. He, like, shoes the cat off the kitchen table. And he signed a picture of himself with the cup that he won when he broke his leg. <laughs> and uh, beautiful, beautiful handwriting. He's, he has one of the most, for my money, one of the most beautiful autographs in the history of hockey, him and Jean Beliveau. And uh, he signed my book as well. He addressed it uh, to my wife and I. And like he just he invited me into his house. And the, the reason he was he was such a local legend, you know, wasn't just stuff like that. But he actually in his later years went back to school and he went to UOIT um, in Oshawa. And, you know, I, if you've ever taken a university course and there's one older student in the class like you can't help but notice like all of you are roughly the same age and you're in your early 20s yeah. probably I, but you every class has a couple right yeah and then you look and there's one guy who's like 75 80 and you're like well what's what's the story there and he would struggle with like uh computer stuff and technological stuff and students wanted to help him because they're kind. Mm-hmm. But then students also found out like, oh, that's Bobby Bond. And <laughs> that's so, cool. So they wanted to help him out more. But he would always reject the help because he was determined to learn it himself. No, I can do it. <laughs> wow. He was, he was determined. Um, and uh, I mean, determination pretty much defines Bobby Bond's legacy, doesn't it? Yeah, no kidding. It, lowering the Boom is the name of his book. Uh, highly recommend you check it out. Um, it is it is difficult to find, but you, you can find it. If you find a hardcover, bless you. Um, they're really hard to come by. But he was, um, he was actually pretty important in the uh, early stages of developing the NHLPA. Um, and basically um, helping players get the money they deserved and and it's fascinating learning about the business ventures of the the Leafs from that era because they were all like well we're Leafs we're famous but we don't really have any money so let's figure out how we can turn this into something sure like a side hustle this is back when players needed a side hustle and he was like well you know what if we didn't need this anymore and we got paid for a blood sweat and tears so yeah check it out lowering the boom. I, I don't know if you've seen them but um all around toronto you'll still see dickie moore um trailers and because dickie moore started a construction rental company oh. he's, he's a famous obviously montreal canadian yeah. uh, he started a 
famous rental company in this area, and it still exists to this day. Obviously, Tim Hortons, same thing. Uh, do you know what Maurice Richard did when he retired? When he retired? Yeah. Like what I, his job was? Because obviously he didn't, have enough, he didn't have enough to live on. I know I know he... Didn't he work at a moving company or something? Yeah, I, I just I, remember the commercials what, from when we were a kid. One of them uh, was he worked in like a fish canning company. Right, right. Like he wasn't the spokesperson. He worked there. He worked there. He canned the fish. Just a guy that had, you know, 500 goals or whatever it was. Isn't First player nuts? to ever score 50 goals in a season. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the PA did some things. <laughs> Changed <laughs> some things. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to think about. But My that's... favorite ex-hockey player who does something else is Vic Hadfield. Does anybody from the west end of the GTA knows Vic Hadfield uh, driving range? So, oh, yeah, he, really? He he's got, that's great. And yeah, sometimes he'll he'll come by there and you'll you'll see him just hanging around putting and that sort of stuff, or just working the cash register. But that's a guy who has a thousand games in the NHL. You know, a very famous, successful hockey player, and just has a driving range out in Oakville. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Bobby yeah. Bond had to do stuff. Lanny McDonald. Had, well, Bob, uh, Bob McGill is a yeah. real estate agent up uh, near my my wife's family cottage. He's a real estate agent. I yeah, knew he, he had a cottage out there. Yeah, he moved. He moved up there because he obviously left the MLSE, right? Because yeah. he worked there for Leafs TV for what twenty years. Doesn't he do like a charity volleyball tournament every? Yeah, year? Yeah, I think he does. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then yeah, so he's. And it's funny because I actually see him. Volleyball. You'll see yeah. his sign on the side of like a barn, and it's like Bob know. McGill, agent. You know, please give me a shout or whatever. It's like it's, it's kind of wild. <laughs> you gotta keep right? busy. <laughs> yeah, you got to do something. Yeah, you can't like, do nothing. That, I mean, listen, I oh, could do nothing. <laughs> I could enjoy nothing. I would I would pick up like tennis or something like you got to find something you want to go to. But a lot of people like they need to they need to have a thing. Well, there's a reason and I don't blame them. There's a reason uh, a lot of these guys who today could retire the moment they retire mm -hmm. um, work until they're like in their 70s. They just because they're determined people. They they. They can't sit still. Yeah, they got itchy feet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I always wonder, like guys like Lou Lamorella, like, don't you want to golf or something? Like, <laughs> don't you? Want no, I, he's in his eighties. He wants to run a hockey team. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> Who can blame him? Now, should should we let him? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, Islanders fans. Um, uh, I want to ask you guys this, actually. Like, do do you want to be podcasting at eighty? No. <laughs> no. Like, we love this, but do you want to be doing it at 80? I'm going to bet no. podcasting doesn't exist 50 years. No, now. it'll be something else. It'll be something else. Yeah. This is like a. It'll revert back to being the radio. Thing. There's something. Yeah, no, I don't know. I have no what's, idea. What's Zuckerberg working on? You know? Are we going to be in the metaverse? Maybe. That thing that he took that, that no one uses? Are we doing a Roblox uh, I look universe? I'll to the day where, like, People have footage of these shows, and we sound as old as Foster. I know. I well, it's like um, if you look up the the Today Show when they're explaining the internet in like 1993. Oh, so, I know. So what is the internet exactly? Brian Gumble and uh, is on there, and they they have like an expert explaining what it is. It's mm -hmm. hilarious. Um, I want to talk about this very quickly because uh, there's this is a brand new announcement as of this morning. Jeff Merrick is reporting that Toronto's PWHL franchise uh, have hired Troy Ryan, who is the Canadian National Women's Head Coach, to be the coach for them, which is a really good get. Oh, nice. uh, we also found out about some signings. Uh, we haven't heard everybody yet, but um, Sportsnet's got a uh, signing tracker up, so we have not heard from Boston or Minnesota, but we do know, as of yesterday, Marie-Philippe Poulin uh, and Renee Desbien uh, and Laura Stacy are going to be with the Montreal franchise, Abby Rourke and Alex Carpenter in New York. Uh, Emily Clark, Brianne Jenner, and Emirates, uh I, for, I can never pronounce it. Mashmeyer. Mashmeyer. Yeah. Um, uh, all of them signing. Great goal. Yeah. So the Ottawa, we know that Ottawa, all three of those players are th on three-year deals. We also know, and this is a big get for Toronto, both, the, the, like, the, well, actually all three of these, mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Nurse, Renata Foss, and Blair Turnbull, all on three-year contracts. Um, I mean, that's uh, pretty solid. Three years is pretty solid. Three years is pretty solid, too. Like so we that. don't have the term lengths. Um, and obviously, we found out Noxie and Cax yesterday that we may not know the financial terms unless all the players vote on that being publicized. I really hope they don't decide to keep it um, under wraps, like their contract details. Like I think that stuff, just for the the sake of the game, you should know how much your competitors are making, so you know how much you should be making. you should be charging. Yeah, that's the whole thing about salary disclosure is yeah. that, and that's why you're starting to see it a lot on um, job postings because people are demanding it. They will not. They won't even apply for a job that doesn't have that because well you shouldn't it's a way for companies to keep your salary down you, yeah because you got nobody to to 
you know, put it against. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, so the camel rides mm -hmm. at the zoo, <laughs> I am serious. I'm about to make this, but it's far more relevant because more people are going to work at a tourist attraction than play professional hockey. Right. right? But, um, there was, there was a guy who worked at the camel rides. Now this was not through the Toronto zoo. It was through a different zoo that was affiliated, but you know, um, and th they said to him in the job interview, they go, uh, what do you want to make? And he wanted the job. So he goes, uh, m minimum's fine. And so he got minimum wage and everyone after him for years got minimum wage Fuck. because they're like, well, he makes minimum. Oh yeah. That's underhanded. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, so what, what do you always want? ask for the maximum? <laughs> always, <laughs> always, always don't even be afraid of it. <laughs> well, Just like, go for it. Yeah. But you're like a teenager. Why take yourself like, out of the race? No, but this is what we need to teach our kids. Yeah. No, I agree. Don't take yourself out you. of the race before it's even started. I so, agree. So uh, right now, Montreal signed MPP. Yeah. They've, 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 she should make the most. She's it, She should be the top earning player in the PWHL. So everybody from there should be percentage of how good you are compared to MPP. Should be the Connor McDavid bar, you know? It's well, like, the, well, it's the Gretzky one, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not, yeah. hey, well, I'm I not also 10% think... as good. <laughs> so I'd say MPP and Hillary Knight, right? Sarah Nurse, too. Sarah Nurse. Sarah Nurse, yeah. But, like, like I, I'm putting I'm putting Miss Marie Philippe Poulin right at the top. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Hillary Knight. Sorry, Hillary Knight. Also, You're not Canadian. Boston's got no signings right now. I'm not saying Hillary Knight's probably oh, going to Boston, come on, but... And she's She's For probably sure in the next Boston. couple of days we're going to hear Hillary Knight signing in Boston. Nothing wrong with spreading out the news as well. I thought I had read somewhere that the players have access to the salary information, um, but it's not publicly available. Maybe I'm maybe I'm know. mistaken. I don't know. Maybe I don't I'm know. Mistaken. Uh, but I, but I hope it did not mention that. I hope it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. Like we get a cap friendly for this league. This has been the hardest. So like again, we haven't spoken much about this um, for as long as it's been going on, which is months and months and months. And the reason is I don't want to, oh. it feels stupid to be like, Oh, um, here's, here's what I read when we have these treasure troves of information in Noxie and Cax, mm -hmm. and we know they're going to do a show when they have all the information. So let's just shut up and let them say it. PWHL Minnesota announces its first three signings. As of two minutes ago, this is via Haley Salvia. Who you got? Uh, we got uh, Lee Stecklin. Uh, Kendall Coyne, Schofield, and Kelly Panic, uh, all on three-year deals. And and uh, Haley wanted to remember, wanted to remind you that uh, Minnesota also has the first overall draft pick. I believe Toronto is second. So this is gonna be fascinating. Um, I'm uh, also. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting that Carell uh, is now a, an agent too, representing players. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's going to be kind of fascinating to see that dynamic sort of unfold. Noted, mm -hmm. Corel. You know what? We noted need new mugs. Corel. <laughs> noted Carell. Cax client. There you go. Now we got to get some mugs. It we need noted Cax client mugs. It took mugs. a second, but you got there. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well last night. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it took me a bit. It took me a bit. Um, no, the Cax. She got. I think she said she got uh, ten clients. So we ten. Got ten we clients. got quite a few T-shirts out there. To yeah, these, these clients. Yeah. That's right. We need we to need, get, send we out a history. We need it. Um, okay, um, we talked a little bit yesterday about the uh, the the constant drama that is the KHL, um, and there's more. Uh, now it, it's not Mitchkov, but it's Ivan Fedotov. Oh, jeez. Now Ivan Fedotov. Uh, this is as of five days ago. Some people have been paying attention. Some people haven't. If you don't remember, uh, he has a contract, a valid contract with the Philadelphia Flyers. He was going to play for the Flyers last year. Some would say that if Fedotov had come in and done a good job, Chuck Fletcher would still be there. Uh, so you know I, what? Ivan Fedotov could have saved Chuck Fletcher's job and the hilarity would have ensued. It's it's a hell of a leap, but like you're not totally Like if they'd finished twentieth, he still got a job. Listen, like uh I, I spoke to some KHL players when um that whole story was breaking and they're like, yo, that goalie's f legit. He's one of the best in this league. He's twenty six years old. Uh the double IHF ruled last month in favor of the NHL. Uh, and saying that uh, Thedatov's contract uh, would be told after, he, basically meaning that his contract starts whenever he shows up with the Flyers, mm -hmm. right? Um, the ruling voided Thedatov's contract with CSKA. Uh, the KHL club uh, also received a one-year international transfer ban because they were trying to block this, right? So they can't do any international transfers. 
Um, and and what the, was their response? The KHL said, that's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> Ivan Fedotov's a goalie here. And they, he, said, they literally said, hey, screw your shank- sanctions. No. Yeah. And <laughs> CSKA starting goalie on September 1st with Ivan Fedotov. Meaning, I believe... If he's still, if he's playing, I think as soon as the NHL season starts, he can't, he can't join the NHL this year. I don't know when that kicks into place, but if you play an international game, I believe after the regular season starts, you're. you're I think no, but it's he's that's... an exception because the contract he has with them isn't valid. The one he has with the Flyers, but is he a... has to leave. No, but they're he's playing under an illegal contract, so he can leave at any point he wants. It's, it's torn just to they're shreds. They're not letting him leave. It's torn to shreds. Like. Do, does he have like a security detail following? Him? Like it's, I don't know. I, right now it's Russia. Right now you just don't know, right? So I so the KHL the landscape of the KHL changes so often. JP Barry, by the way, who is Fedotov's agent, I want to add this, said sure. in a July statement that the goaltender would abide by the double IHF's ruling either way. Mm-hmm. He said we spoke to Ivan today, and his position is that he will abide by the double IHA uh, double IHF uh, ruling, whether it's the Flyers or CSKA. Um, he simply wants to resume his career. By the way, he he was going to go over and play for them, and the part we left out, and we mentioned it yesterday, is that the Russian government said, ah, no, you have military service, yeah. which hockey players traditionally have been able to skip, um, and he ended up in the Navy in the Baltic, which is very effing cold. Yeah. And he has he has played a game for a CSK yeah. season. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he started, started the first game. Started September yeah. 1st. So, so he's like... He's playing under an illegal contract. He He's also from Finland. The Flyers. So here's here's what I'm. So the the landscape of the KHL has changed dramatically since I was doing highlights for them mm-hmm. a decade ago, and um, there were more countries involved back then, um, which you would have had, frankly, more opportunities to escape. Yeah. Well, because you had. You had Cro- Croatia, you had Czechia, you had Croatia had Finland a team, had Czechia, a team, Slovakia because Jokerit was there. Did Sweden have a team? No, Finland did. Finland, yeah, they had Jokerit. Um, Belarus, Belarus. Well, but so that they're you know closely so, allied, but yeah. So here's the problem. So China I'm, had a team. I'm looking. Uh, China didn't back then. Oh, China. Now that now they do. Okay. So Minsk in Belarus, Beijing in China. And I believe there is one more team outside of Russia, and it is Boris Estina in Kazakhstan. Mm. Um, I think he's stuck. All right. And and the question is like, okay, the IIHF ruled that your contract in Russia is not valid. The Flyers have your rights. So why is he still there? So it, it comes back to somebody we talked to, uh, about yesterday. And Rottenberg, who's in charge of this council, and also his nephew, who's the coach over... Yeah, Arkady uh, Rottenberg is the chairman yeah. of the Russian Ice Hockey Federation. His nephew is the coach of C- of, of SKA St. Petersburg. Um, and yeah, it's so just... a small council... I'll read this directly. A small council, excluding the IIHF, consisted of vital members from the uh, RHF, the KHL, and, the, and CSKA uh, making the decision. The council included Rottenberg and... Um, and, the, and close allies of Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Uh, they decided that it was biased, one-sided affair with the Russian Federation in defiance of the fair and balanced contract agreement decision upheld by the WHF in favor of the NHL and the Flyers. So they said it was biased and that their ruling in Russia is the one that's valid. These guys who, who are in charge of the league, who, who said that, we, who made the contract say our contract is valid and we supersede the WHF, which is just makes no sense because you can't say that my ruling just means more because I say it means more. Yeah, you're, so you're, he doesn't, uh, Fedotov's not going to fight the Russian government. So he played goal and he's playing uh, for this. I, I want to, you cannot welcome them to any international tournament in the near future. Well, and, and you, it, you can't. it also, um, it, I think it ties in with the NHL and the NHLPA. Uh, there's a report out this summer. Um, I'm just getting all the stuff that we couldn't get to this summer. Um, that the PA and the NHL are working on an internal competition for 2025, which I'm assuming is something along the lines of a, quote, World Cup of Hockey with some of Europe. Um, uh, I'm assuming Russia won't be invited to that. Athletes from Russia, maybe. Um, and, uh, and then a return to the Olympics. And one of the problems with going to the Olympics, if you're coming 
only from Gary Bettman and Bill Daly's perspective is they don't want to pay uh, to send the players and they don't want to pay the insurance and all the other things that, you know, because there are costs incurred. And, you know, John Tavares got injured at an Olympics and, the you know, the Islanders lost him for the rest of the season and owners are, you know, I understand that as an owner. If I'm paying a guy 50, 60 million bucks, I, I for sure like want him to. I understand where it comes from. I get where it's come from. It's still the wrong call, but I get it. Yeah. Um, and so they're working on that. Now, the NHL obviously has always had a powerful position because the NHL has the best players. Yes. If the AAHF were to come back at the NHL, the AAHF's, you know, obviously it's got the various European leagues that are run much differently than the NHL is. They're not franchises so much as they're, you know, a lot of them are community owned and, and, and supported and that sort of thing. Without the KHL, how much in the way of teeth does the IHF really have? Because I, be, my belief has always been that their main source of support, especially coming out of the last lockout, where the KHL came out looking pretty good, right? You know, 10 years ago, you were working for the KHL. Uh, there was a lot of players, NHL players going and playing over there. And they were able to pull players like Ilya Kovalchuk away from the NHL with enormous money, mm-hmm. right? That, that used to happen. It's not happening anymore. How valuable, how much power, how much credence do we give the IIHF now if they don't have that Russian base? And I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but they have all the hockey outside of North America. The biggest league outside of North America is the Continental Hockey League. Mm-hmm. And with Russia saying, we're not going to listen to you without saying it, why does the NHL have to listen to them? And I know they're hooked in with the Olympics, but still. Uh, I think I think it's a matter of, uh, it's just the KHL is not listening. The, mm-hmm. Like, listen, the NHL wouldn't, listen to the double IHF if the double IHF was being unreasonable. They're not being unreasonable here. No, they're being completely reasonable. They're being completely reasonable. So like I understand the scenario or the potential scenario that you're talking about. I just don't think it's realistic. But I do you think that the NHL doesn't now try to bully the double IHF because that's how the NHL operates. Oh, I'm sure that's that's a day that ends with why for the double IHF though. Yeah. You know, and I mean what does the double IHF uh, or what does the NHL care about with regard to the double IHF um, outside of like, is it, isn't this agreement with the KHL and honoring contracts, the most important thing for the NHL? If they want to do an international tournament, they can simply do one. Mm-hmm. We already know that. Right. And if they wanted to go to the Olympics, but the double IHF said, no, like well, they, they're always going to say, yeah, but the, does the NHL then use this opportunity to go, the IIHF's weak, let's push them on the expenses and make them pay. You want stars? Ah. You're not going to You're not gonna get stars in the Olympics uh, out, of, out of the KHL. Well, maybe this, so, maybe this is why things are progressing. <laughs> maybe, this, maybe this is why things are actually moving forward. Isn't it weird that they dug in for so long about the Olympics and now they're like, we got it. We'll go. It's great. And we all thought it was because they were going to have this World Cup. Well, sounds like they're going to do both. Maybe the maybe mm-hmm. the uh, maybe the double IHF blinked. Well, I, I don't know if they have a choice at this point. I just thought that was interesting. That dynamic is going to be that's going to change significantly. Rene Fassell and uh, Gary Bettman used to go head to head all the time. They'd issue press releases, and they you'd see them sitting together at hockey games, hating it. <laughs> but they'd have to sit together and talk for three hours. I don't know. It's it's. I'm still unsure that NHL players will be at the next Olympics. It seems well, still it's not done. Even when I see it. It's yeah. not done. It's, it feels still so touch and go. Like they were, they were pretty close uh, last time around if like COVID didn't take over that whole situation. The, this the, podcast um, was one year old last time the NHL was at the Olympics. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know because them putting on their own World Cup, like that's going to happen. So I could see them maybe pushing for everything they want. And then if they don't get it, you know, you settle back and you just say, no, we got our own World Cup and it was successful. It was fun, but you can't call it best on best. No, it's not at all. No, the but, final was between a country and not a country. But it's Gary <laughs> Bettman in charge of that. And he's going to say, we have our own thing. Why are we going to go do this other people's thing? Because way more people care about the other people's thing than your thing. They they haven't cared about that in a long time. No. Like, w- that World Cup, would the 2016 World Cup have been a colossal failure if it wasn't here? 
the one hockey market that they could not possibly bleed dry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like not not to play that card. A lot of a lot of the there's it, a reason they hosted it in Toronto. Right. Fuck yeah. And I get that. I, I understand that. You want to but the thing about it is that Toronto would have been a great launching pad. It people came away from that World Cup, except for the finals game, which was or the finals series, the which was game, kind of boring. Yeah. Um, because it was like Canada dominating some of Europe. Um, Not the final no, the, game. F- the last game was like overtime, right? Or yeah. Last th- minute they scored. Because oh, okay. it was a best yeah. of three. Oh, best of three. Um, the I first think, game was dominating. I think yeah. Canada kicked their ass the first game. Yeah. 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 Um, I just remember everything up to the finals was really exciting. It actually, the Team North America was awesome. And like, that was cool. It's still one of my greatest They didn't even regrets. make it out of the round robin. I, I could have gone to that game. I know. And I, it's still, it's. I know. Team Honestly, North America, it's maybe my greatest. Did it make it out of the rock? But they were fun. Rock. They were fun to watch. They, they thought were... they did. Yeah, oh. yeah. They thought that that great video of Morgan Riley mic'd up and reacting to McKinnon's game winner. They all thought they advanced. Yeah, that's why they reacted. But that but way. the thing about that is that was the great momentum jumping off point. Mm-hmm. The, the the feeling after that World Cup World Cup in quotes was real. Like it really did have a really good feeling to it. But now we're talking, guys, we sound old talking, but we were we were in our mid twenties when that happened. And and so like that's how long it's been. So there so like to to get that sort of momentum again, you sort of have to restart the whole thing. Three World Cups ago, the starting goalie for the States was Mike Richter. Was that ninety six? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been a ninety six, a two thousand and three four, I think. Okay. It was right before the lockout. Right. And, and Lemieux was on Canada. I now. remember that. And then that. 2016. None of none of the Canada games were. The, I guess the Russia game there was three two in overtime, but like Canada finished that round robin with a plus eleven goal differential. And it's funny the round robin. <laughs> yeah, it's funny nobody nobody was cheering for them. Like <laughs> like it was really most people were going out. Oh, let's go team North America. This right. Austin Matthews kid look. Who, Austin had not played a game in the NHL and he's playing with McDavid. Morgan Riley's on that team. Nathan McKinnon's on that. That team is outrageous. It in was retrospect. just. I mean, it was just a influencer haven too. Oh yeah. Like, I'm I'm curious how many people bought tickets. There were a lot of lanyards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of lanyards, man. Yeah. How many games did the United States win? Oh, they didn't do well. They went zero and three. Ooh, yeah. No way. Yeah. Torts was the coach, was he not? I'm pretty sure Torts uh, was the coach, and he didn't take Phil Kessel, and then that, that's where that famous feels like there's somewhere I should oh. be right now tweet came from. That was a great tournament. It really was. There was drama. There was surprise. There was like, it was, it really was. If they had just continued to go with it, they would have been fine. It was well traveled, too. Oh, yeah. A lot of Swedes came. Yeah, yeah it was a great. A lot of Finns came. Mm hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Fascinating. I don't have the head coaches. I think you're right with Torts. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the other thing I thought was interesting from the double IHF. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but um, refs in Sweden can be interviewed after the game on television. Good. Um, in the event of controversial calls, the SHL refs will talk to the studio post game explaining their side of the call. This is from the Mighty Swede on uh, Reddit. Uh, the analyst, uh, they actually have started doing it. Um, and, and there's a clip that we can't play because it's broadcast television. But the analyst apparently really lays into the ref. He lays into him. Yeah, and says, like, what were you doing? <laughs> what? So In Swedish? In Swedish. Which, you know, I have to imagine is still quite polite. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want the... I don't want reporters to be able to interview refs just to kill them. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know I've been screaming about that, and I've been angry at refs and mad at their calls, but, like, these guys are also good at their job, and... If you ask them a question, they might give you a really good answer. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the whole. I don't think the point is to sewer them. I think the point is to get clarity, which yes. is what we're not allowed to have right now. Yes. Like, how often after a game are you just like, well, I don't, I don't fucking, I don't know what just happened. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and 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 then you see the broadcasters trying to break it down afterwards, and and especially the rights holders. Are, and they're guessing. They're, well, they're yeah. guessing, and they're bending themselves into a pretzel. To try to not make the league look bad because they know they're going to get a call from head office. We know that happens. It does happen. And and so they're going, well, I mean, uh, uh, and you're trying, like, it's 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 just ask. Yeah, And certain- if the ref makes a mistake, okay. 
they're searching for the reasons for why the ref made that call in that moment to try and justify it. But like, what we need is just a, a report that says like, hey, the refs made a mistake here. Like, we can acknowledge that the refs make mistakes. Uh, the umpires in baseball, you can get the percentage of calls they got right. The NBA has has their uh, two minute report where they'll just be like, yeah, they yep. missed a foul with 30 seconds to go. And we can all just acknowledge that they made a mistake. And I just like some acknowledgement from the league that your refs aren't perfect human angels. I remember one time at a Raptors game, I got up from my seat to go get something, came back and the score had changed. No, oh, because the foot on the three point line. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. the? Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. But they were like, well, we can just change it. <laughs> we'll just go back. So, like, if we're wrong, we can just fix the issue. <laughs> so, that's admit, what they did. Just admit that your refs aren't perfect, Gary. Like, that's, that's hilarious. Man, the. Um, <laughs> One of the things I really like about those, I, I think there's a TikTok account called Ump Auditor hmm. or something like that. Man, broadcasters are not afraid to just be like, well, that's a ridiculous call. Yeah. Uh, in particular with people are fed up with Angel Hernandez. Mm -hmm. He doesn't he, he doesn't belong in there. That's it's, in it's actually League kind baseball. of surprising that that guy specifically, because like he doesn't uh, belong in Major even, League Baseball. Even like Sportsnet will put on like, well, Andrew, Andrew Fernandez uh, or Hernandez, Hernandez did mm -hmm. this uh, did this game. How did he do? Like it's everybody. It's a storyline. Still terrible. Even if it's not a Blue Jays game, they're like, "Well, let's find out." With b basically every game without fail, ter terrible. Yeah, because you can't hide it. Like there's a little box on the screen. You but see you, where, you can, see where the ball goes, and you can't hide it. You can stop it though. Yes, by removing him, <laughs> making him better, or and, getting and him out of the game. Majorly, I know he's a part of a union, so he yeah. they probably can't. Probably very difficult to fire him without like a serious cause. Just put him on leave. Uh, I don't know about that. Just John, say you're not. John Boy, John Boy is all over this. Uh, John Boy Media is all over this. Uh, this is one of the ways I got into him. One, it was the Astro scandal, and the other, it was uh, uh, Angel Hernandez. But he's he's like, you don't have to be the home plate umpire. Yeah, he could be the second base guy. Yeah, they'll just make him something else. Because it might be balls like a strikes. hierarchy thing. It might I don't be know. A, it might be like a, I've been at the union this many years, and. I deserve this because I bet the the guys behind the plate are the ones that are like the most esteemed. Well, whatever it is, well, he ain't esteemed. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. fucking terrible at his job. Not yet. He's Angel not. Hernandez, by the way, has a ninety two percent accuracy uh, rate right going right now on the season, which is not good if you're a baseball umpire. What is what is the average? Because ninety two percent for me in anything sounds great. Yeah, but if um, you're if, if you're, you're a baseball like umpire, me. and your job's calling balls and strikes. You gotta be above a ninety two percent. There's a younger guy. What's his last name? He Hol now has Holbert? the lowest correct call in the league. Yeah, so this is from a little bit ago where I'm looking. August seventh, so only a month early ago. Early August. Um, I think is when the article. Wow. Was but August 11th is when this was written. But he had a medical issue early on this season. Like okay. he missed yeah, he the missed majority of the games. season. And then he didn't start umping until uh, July or something like that. But like immediately when he came back, he was clipping at 92%, which puts him at the very bottom. Like the next guy up was 92.8. So there you go. And uh, Ancient Hand is 92.11. Uh, wow. There's a younger guy, I think Holberg or something like that. Like he's a robot. He's a robot. Like he's something like 99. That's amazing. Like, he's ridiculously... I don't know why they don't just do the robot umps. It's going to happen. Just do it. Uh, At least behind the plate. Just well, do it. Yeah, but there are there's proof of concept where there's there are people who can do their jobs properly. Mm -hmm. And, like, John Boy has done breakdowns of the umps got this call wrong. Here's why. It's because they're over the plate. Like, they're peering around the guy, and they're, like, on an angle. And, like, yeah, of course your view of where the rectangle is or the, or the strike box strike zone sorry is going to be wrong you're you're looking at it like a picasso painting like what what's wrong with you if you if you care to get better at your job there are ways to get better at your job yeah you know and generally speaking i'm not going to argue in favor of robots taking human jobs right mm -hmm. but i mean fuck if you're going to keep stinking at it you we need more guys like buddy who's the terminator who gets 99% of the calls right oh i forgot his name we never, we never know the good ones. <laughs> no, we only know the bad ones because the bad ones are the story, story, right? Yeah, I'm gonna look. Um, it up. Okay. Um, but the one thing, one thing that baseball players and managers always ask about their umpires is just consistency. Like if you're calling the same strike high all game long, then that's the strike zone that day. 
you know, but the problem with these umpires is they get wildly inconsistent and you never know where the strike's going to be. But if you're consistent but wrong, like, it's fair game. Pat Hoberg is the name of the younger guy. He's 36. Hmm. Yeah, he's that one who had a – it was like a, a almost a perfect game. It was like one off of a perfect game for balls and strikes. Like wild, this year. wildly accurate. Yeah. Wildly accurate. Like, you know, Major League Baseball should have the best in the world. Uh-huh. He's the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. Angel Hernandez. You'll hear that (laughs) argument too a lot in hockey is that it's a difficult job and that these are the best and they're still bad at it. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their best and this is the best you got and their, their accuracy is never going to be that high. And this is the highest level you can get to. Yeah. But just like with hockey, you can point to the best players and go, here's what the best players do. And you can point to the worst players and go, here's what the worst players do. Start doing the things that the best players do. And if you can't rep- replicate those traits, you're off the team because some guy is going to develop and come up and be better than you. You can't, you can't build a team of uh, 12 Connor McDavid's. Yeah, but the goal is to try. <laughs> the goal is to, but you can have a McDavid and a Dry Seidel and a Hyman and a, you know, uh, all the other guys in the Oilers who score 50 goals. <laughs> yeah. How many How many referees are there in the NHL? Do you guys know? Shitload. Like the total amount of referees? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Good I don't know how I you find know. a happy medium there. Like on any given night, there's going to be seven or eight games like mm-hmm. on, on busy nights. And then there's certain nights where there's like two or three. So you're going to need four for each of those. So let's say there's 28 needed. But then you got people in travel. And... Uh, they're moving around all the time because the refs travel as much or more than the players do. So, like, do you need 100 refs? Do you need 120 you refs? Uh, when NHL referees or linemen finish officiating a game, the best results no one's talking about, they're the league's 35 full-time referees and 35 linesmen. Wow, that's it. That's it. Wow. That's well, not much. They don't have a long cast to, like, swap in guys. Damn. You'd think they'd be able to find well, better ones. I guess it's only you can only do 16 games a night. <laughs> so yeah. So 30, 35 yeah. is... is more than double. <laughs> okay. There was one guy. Can't remember his name. Can't remember if he was an official or a linesman, but he's like a world-class golfer um, to the point where he oh, was, yeah. he was doing us open qualifiers Yeah, and he had to leave his us open qualifier to go do, I think it was like an Avs blues playoff game. My, uh, <laughs> the, the guy who, my swing coach, he knows him. No they're, way. They're like, they're like really? No he's golfed with him before. Yeah. That's a great. That's really cool. I, I forget it. I forget his name. I'll, ah, I'll, uh, <laughs> that I'll, is cool. I'll go look it up and stuff. Um, we should, I should bring him on uh, Jesse versus you. Oh, yeah, I can, I'll reach out. I'll see, I'll just see what I can mopped. do. I'm just gonna ask him terrible reference. You should have. You should have even up scores too. <laughs> what if you bring him on? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, it's, well, it's a ref ref theme, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody gets par, somebody else should get par as well. Jesse's five over par. <laughs> this guy's five under. No, you're even both up. you're both zero. You're even par. <laughs> this putt is worth triple. Even yeah. <laughs> so I, I was I, looking to get a putt for Nashville. Yeah. I was worried there that I'm like, am I misunderstanding the conversation when the joke didn't no, land? No. I was like, shit. Like, I I swear to God, I've been listening the whole time. That's funny. Uh, man. Um, Patrick Kane says uh, rehab from hip surgery is on track, if not at a schedule. Uh, I love this line. Uh, this is from the Associated Press, but I love this line because. As a Leaf fan, again, everything is viewed through a, through a Leafs lens. And That's I remember true. that one time where uh, it was a big deal that Phil Kessel had only gone on the ice th- uh, three times over the course of the summer. You have Whatever to remember, was. he was his early 20s and he was perfectly healthy and still went out and ripped like 35 goals the next year. But uh, Patrick Kane has already been on the ice 20 times hmm. since the surgery, I believe, June 1st. And it's hip re- resurfacing surgery. So if you've ever seen a road resurfaced, imagine it's your hip. Um, and I guess he says he's feeling better. He says he's getting back to his old self, with his, which he feels is, is exciting, and that potentially he could be back before. So my question is, where does he play? Hmm. Because, I mean, New York makes a lot of sense, but with the caps, the cap being the way that it is, not the not the Washington Capitals, um, he's probably going to have to sign like a league men deal. Hmm. I think it's going to be bonus laden, right? Like think of think of the sort of deal that Connor Brown signed with the Oilers. Sure. Where I think it's league men or around league men, but if you play 
Remember is it, Bergeron's contract last year? Oh, you play ten games, you get another like yeah. Two, but is it two worth, million dollars? Is it worth going over the cap, like having cap overage at the end of the season to have Patrick Kane in the lineup? Because so, that's what you're looking at for a lot of these teams. That over the next year or two, I think that's going to be very, very interesting. Um, Elliot Friedman was talking about this because the cap is going to go up by basically leaps and bounds. If you're a team that is in win-now mode? Well, you're in win-now mode, and it's looking realistic that you could do it. I mean, why wouldn't you kick the can down the road? You know, a couple of years ago, if you go $2 million over the cap and it carries over to next year, that's a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That's killing you. Like, like but if you go a couple million over, like, the, I think this, the, the Bruins were over last year. So if this yes. were next year, it wouldn't be so bad. Exactly. Even this year, I mean, it did go up a little. Um, and f- I mean, who could blame them? They won 65 games. Yeah. <laughs> their goalie won the Vesna and scored a goal. But if you delay that, that a year, it's probably like, they're probably able to hold on like to like Bertuzzi and yeah, like their, like their cap still probably goes up even though there's a whatever million dollar penalty, uh, up against it. Interesting. Right. That's so, interesting. So I don't think any team would have a problem. Like the Oilers obviously don't give a shit about giving Connor Brown, a contract that could take them over the cap. Yeah. Um, I don't think any team out there would uh, hesitate to go over the cap if it meant them getting Patrick Kane. I like that as a strategy too. Like I do like, uh, cause I think the Patriots did that with Tom Brady for years. Like they kind of loaded up, loaded up, loaded up and had overages. And then once Brady left and went to Tampa, there was like no, some penalties, thinking, weren't there? He, he deferred his contract every year. So he would keep pushing the money that he was owed every year so that the Patriots would have more to work with. Oh, so like he would be oh. owed 20 million, but he would defer it to the next. And season. you can do that in the NFL, which yeah, you can't so do. You can defer the money and then, imagine? but eventually know. you got to pay it out. You know, eventually, and then they had to do that. So eventually, it, it'll catch up with them after they win seven Super Bowls. So, you know, or six in 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 New England. But, but would I do it all again? <laughs> I think they would do it all again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't hear much about this this summer, but uh, Jonas uh, Donskoy uh, retired uh, this year, thirty one right. years old, uh, multiple concussions. Carl Hagelin as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. guys who uh, I thought had. Plenty of hockey left in them based on Valuable their age players and too. Their skill level. Well, Hagelin, Hagelin um, was a bit more of a slower decline. Um, like he went from playoff rock star to like replacement level. Um, kind of to the point where you didn't notice mm-hmm. until he was <laughs> like getting healthy scratched and stuff. Um, I mean, this, this is the uh, cautionary tale, right? Whenever a player, you know, doesn't take the the max contract or the max money, you know, whenever a player leaves money on the table, like we all, or at least I want my favorite players on my favorite team to do, um, you may never see that money again. Yeah. Your body might tell you it's over. And that's what it did for Don Scoy. And that's what it did for Hagelin. I wonder if, um, I'm just thinking about this now, cause there's the new CBA that's going to come in the next few years here. I wonder if salary deferral is going to be on the cards. I wonder if that's what the PA pushes for. So, hmm. so if you're if you're in a position because because let's let's not argue this um, because it's true. Austin Matthews, William Nylander, John Tavares, and Mitch Marner have taken a lot of shit because their collective deals, even though all of them have performed very well, and really, if you're gonna make if you're gonna split hairs. Only Tavares in some circles has underperformed. And frankly, I don't think he has. I think he's been spectacular every single year. He's been yeah. um, All of them are, I, I think it's it's almost inarguable that all of them are worth that. It's just, are they worth that together? And if one or two of those guys could have pushed it down the road a little bit, um, would that, that have else? helped the Leafs bring on some other people, allowed them to get out of the first round earlier, and maybe change the way that the team is looked at. Like, I feel like the hard, the hardness of the cap is, it's really not good for the players or the team. The hard cap cap sucks. It sucks. Like in every single way, there should be no hard, just flat line cap. You can't go over it. It's stupid. It hurts. It hurts the players. It hurts the league. It'd be more, so much more fun. It was just a soft cap. You do a luxury tax and you pay into it. More money goes in the league. More money goes to the players and you get more creative with these teams. I just feel like it flies. Oh, Jesse. Whoa. Whoa. Fucking crazy. Crazy idea. I just think it flies in the face of what the NHL wants, which is parody, 
right? Mm-hmm. So like we brought up, oh, the NHL has salary, or sorry, the NFL has sal- salary deferral. And look, the Patriots won six Super Bowls. Well, that's not what the NHL also, wants. I overly simplified that yeah. just for the sake of well, And also the Patriots, yeah. the Patriots are, fair enough, Steve. Um, but like I, I, if we want, I don't want to get too much in the cap conversation. I know yeah. people get annoyed. But if you look at the, the, uh, the NBA, which has a luxury to hard tax. So there is a luxury tax threshold and then there is a hard, you can't fucking pass this number. Um, the cap and then the real and, cap. and people are like, well, only only the big market teams win in the NBA. Is Milwaukee a big market team in the NBA? They're, they're, they've been State. dominant for seven years. Got a championship. I know that Miami won some championships. I know LA won some championships growing up, but do you watch the NBA? The Golden State Warriors aren't even the biggest... They're not even the second nah, biggest team in Golden, California. Golden State's a big market. They're a big market now, but who the fuck were the Warriors when we were growing up? That's true, but I guess when they were over in Oakland. When they needed... They were smaller than the, the Clippers. Clippers. Yeah, when they got... Yeah, but like you think about the proximity to everything that they are right now in San Francisco. Their proximity to the billions of dollars. I guess that's than true. any other team. That's true. You mm-hmm. know, that's true. Yeah, I, absolutely. But <laughs> getting Steph Curry changed that. Being a Warrior before was like, oh, good for you. <laughs> You're putting a lot of disrespect on Baron Davis. I liked Baron Davis. That contract <laughs> was it. Baron Davis's contract that had to be paid out forever, or was it? There was somebody else from that era. It's Baron Davis, so. or oh man. Anyway, whatever. Almost um, guaranteed it was a Raptor. Uh, uh, so on on the concussion thing, the retiring last week, um, a new study uh, came out of uh, Boston University about CTE. Adam, you can probably speak a lot better than this than I can because you did a whole podcast with um, Alan Walsh on uh, CTE and the uh, got a whole series. Sometimes it feels like yeah, because Alan's yeah. passionate about it. So uh, a new study has diagnosed uh, the degenerative brain disease CTE in more than forty percent of youth, high school, and college athletes, primarily football players who were exposed to repetitive head impacts from contact sports, died before the age of thirty. So more than forty percent of youth who were in high-level sports, getting a lot of brain injuries, had CT, and they died before the age of 30. I mean, we all know probably more than one person who had to bow out of sports, uh, like, in their teens. Yeah. Because of concussions. And, like, your body tells you, no, you you can keep going. It's not yeah. how it works, man. Yeah. You, you don't know the underlying impacts because you can't see the brain. You don't know the impacts that it's taken. What I do time. like, though, is that these guys, at very least, are going, I do have I do have a life beyond this. And I got to I got about the understanding whether or not the league recognizes it is sort of immaterial as long as the players are getting it. Uh, because, you know, we've seen enough of these documentaries. Rick Westhead's done a couple of them where you're like, it, 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 they don't have a life. You know, one of the guys, and I and forgive me, I forget his name, but he's living on the street in BC, like Who's homeless. That? Yeah, uh, the uh, finding it was called finding, and I can't remember the the player's Murph. name. Finding Murph, Joe Murphy, that, Joe Murphy. There it is. Yeah, For, uh, first overall pick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, great player. So these are the things that I. So you know, congratulations to Don Scoy on a great career. I thought I think he's a fantastic player. He's one of those guys. I'm like, God, I wish he played for the Leafs. Like he was just such a great player, um, and it's it's a bummer to see him to see him go like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's protecting his long term health. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Now we are going to do an extra, a, a bit of a longer press conference because there were a lot of questions we didn't get to yesterday. But I did want to say this one last thing, and this is from uh, Talking Baseball with the John Boy Network. Uh, the Phillies announced that they've placed Trey Turner on the paternity list. Today, which was the day yesterday, marked the nine-month anniversary of the day that Turner signed his three hundred million dollar contract with the Phillies. I mean, I would. Wouldn't you be? I would be happy. And well, everyone in the house was happy. I think everybody was happy. Good for them. Can I tell you something that screwed me up? What? When uh, uh, my wife was pregnant. So, how, how long is a woman pregnant? With with a human baby, it's nine and a nine and three quarter months or something. Well, Isn't it like seven and a half? No, 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 no. no, no. It's, it's longer than nine months. We sound so like three guys talking about pregnancy yeah. right now. Okay, so it's so much longer than you think, and not shorter what, than you think. But what know. what are you told? Growing nine up, nine months, nine months. Yeah, it's you're not, not told what Adam just said. Yeah, but but it's forty weeks. Mm-hmm. But how many weeks are in a month? Four. four. What's four times ten? Yeah, yeah. It's ten months. Yeah, it's really confusing. <laughs> I don't know why they do that, but I think it's because they people want to di- uh, they want to the the trimesters they want to have it like an equal three, like nine is divisible by three cleanly. 
there's no you know decimal points, so it's easier to put it in those terms. But it's super weird that we were like, yeah, it's for sure nine months when it's very clearly not. No, nope. don't they say ten? I don't, I don't know because that's what it is. Or like nine and a half. Yeah, um, I know. I'm. Uh, there's a few people rolling their eyes right now, and there's a bunch of brains also melting. Yeah. At wait a sec, is it nine or ten? It's not nine. That's right. It's I'll not t- ten. And I'll tell you this: the second trimester, mm-hmm. it's the best one. Why? It's the best one. Why? Uh, because <laughs> because they're not they're they're not feeling that morning sickness anymore. At least that's what I was told. I've been told the second trimester. Okay. Is the best one. <laughs> and as you because know, you feel look, here's the thing: you're useless, right? Like when when the first trimester, your partner is you know having morning sickness and all these things. Please don't clip this. <laughs> well, we're not. <laughs> We're, no, we're terrible. We're, what are we going to do? No, it's like, I know. You know, you want to help, and it's like there's only certain things you can take to help and grab all, and you can't do that. You have to take ginger and all these things and whatever. And and then the second trimester, they're, you know, energized, ready to go, and, and you start to see the bump, which is cool. Yeah. And the third trimester, it's like it's either in their it's either in their uh, their ribs or they're hanging too low and it's uncomfortable. And if it's summer, they're sweating. It's like just, it's brutal. It's a brutal process. God bless you. Leo kicked the shit out of my wife. Like she was a dance dance revolution machine. Like <laughs> he He's he, a high energy kid. You know the, the 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 paper that comes out yeah. and you see the activity? Oh, it was just a straight line. <laughs> it was just a straight line. Um I always I'm always wondering and I'm curious about people that have had a second kid. Um if cause cause I've had some people tell me, okay, the first kid is like it's a lot. Second kid, it's like, ah, I'm already doing all that work anyway. Now I thought I took that advice and got a second dog. And I can tell you this. Second dog is not double the work. It's probably three or four times the work. Why? Be- oh, you're wrong. Dog. It is the second no dog way. is way harder. I would love to have two dogs. But you can Adam, have both of mine. Adam for <laughs> You wanna? I'm kidding. I love That's my I love my dog. Ass. I love my dog. Bindi and me? Cedric, don't listen to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're great. Bindi would just look at you would just looking at you like this. Well, what we have, yeah, because that's how she she's got that s- sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, Bindi's thing going adorable. On. They have they have okay. We have three pets because Natalie came to the marriage with a pet, and I had two. On rotating days, somebody has done something. So one day it's Bindi chew to shoe, um, which apparently is a mark that they love you. So she always chews Natalie's shoe. She adores Natalie. Uh, on another day, Seti has snuck upstairs. We hide Teddy the cat's food but said he knows where it is and if we're not paying attention he's up those stairs and hoovering that you know and then you know and then a cat they are they're cute and adorable and whatever but they also are vomit machines they just vomit everywhere all the time so it's like it's what every day there's something and had a toddler as well and they come with their own things there's a lot man i would i want waffles to have a little friend just to hang. What, what about, about two? What about Sit a down. big friend that looks exactly like Waffles? Like I'm not Bindi. taking your dog, Adam. Okay, just saying. <laughs> so I think that's a pretty good sales what if, pitch. What if you're a, just an adult who keeps getting hoodwinked by his pets? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the part that I don't want to admit to myself. Have you not consider that maybe your pets are smarter that's, than you? That's the part that I can't. My ego won't let me. My ego won't let me. Steve. Yeah, but you acknowledge it. That's do you think point. I should get a second dog? Yeah. It's not twice the work. That's bullshit. Adam said it's three times. That's, it no, that's not. Don't do it, Jesse. Not because two dogs together aren't great, but but the thing is, is that two dogs, when you're not with child, are okay. Yeah. But then with child, it's different. Two dogs. It's a, a lot of two work. Dogs and a baby. It's a we lot had of work. Two eighty-pound dogs, and one of them, his favorite delicacy in the whole world was his own shit, and <laughs> it was not twice the work. A lot, a lot of dogs uh, like like munching on poo. May That's, Charlie rest in peace. Charlie doesn't have to be ashamed of he that. He was a good dog. <laughs> uh, I miss him. <laughs> but he ate a lot of his own shit. We had, we had Krispy Kremes. Uh, he in the he, he had his Krispy Kremes. We Sorry. had Krispy Kremes in the office yesterday. I brought home one for my girlfriend, Gabby, and she put it on the coffee table and Waffles ate half of it. <laughs> <laughs> waffles is not big so either. That, waffles no, is not a big she, dog. She jumped, so she stood on the couch. She's very smart. She stood on the couch and leaned over to the coffee table and almost tipped it all over, but she got the donut and just munched. You know when they, they're they eating something, they're not supposed to eat it, and they barely chew it, and they just yeah. swallow it whole? It was one of those. Yep. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was so mad at her. Yep. 
Yeah. Anyways, let me let me know on on Discord or Twitter or the, you know Instagram what this DMs is. This is just going to be self affirmation. Dog. That's all this is going to. Let be. me know if I should get another like, dog. Get it. Get another dog. Just going to be <laughs> great. And then three years from now, when you're cleaning up something every day. Something every day, like especially if That's Jesse Blake becomes true. Jesse Blake the dad. I don't one day do you, you hate having two pets. I love it. Three pets. I love so it, but much. I'm allowed to complain about it. It sounds like you love it. It's I do out, actually. Yeah. I love those dogs. I do. I yeah. love those dogs. So you love much. them, but and they're becoming. They're getting older too, and they're slowing mm -hmm. down a little bit, especially Bindi. which you love. Well, I love that. <laughs> I won't lie that. I won't lie there. It's it's great, but like they they become so like they're they're just so loving in their old age. They just want to cuddle. And they, when you when you walk with them off leash at like a you know on a cottage road or something, they don't go anywhere. You don't have to call them back. They're just like I'm hanging with you because Adam's my like, eyesight's not as good. If they go somewhere, I don't even have to go get them. Well, I I've had to chase them into the woods before. <laughs> I think the problem is Adam. <laughs> All right, it couldn't be me. No, it's got to be everything else. It cannot be me. I can't be the problem here. No. <laughs> did, did I tell you about um uh I had to grab Iggy recently. Grab him. Oh, oh no. I had to grab him. So we were out in front of the house because mm -hmm. sometimes we have to go in front of the house because he's like, I feel like peeing here. <laughs> What's wrong with the backyard, Iggy? That's what I ask him, but he doesn't know English. So we have to go to the front of the house, right? <laughs> you know, if only it's he paid more attention. That's hilarious. In class, you know, he, he would know all the words. He knows all the words. He's fucking bullshitting. Anyway, so we got to take him to the front of the house. <laughs> here's the other problem. I was high. Oh, yeah. Had an edible. I sure did. And uh, standing there in front of the house. But then Iggy's ears go up. And I hear a scurrying down the street. And so I just instinct drop to my knees and grab Iggy around squirrel. his entire self. Not squirrel. Coyote. Oh. Where the fuck is your leash? Yeah. What are you doing? Because we were just in front of the house. I thought it'd be fine. Jesse, Put the dog on a fucking leash. Jesse, is Steve the problem? Is Steve the reason that Iggy had to be tackled? Okay. I sounds like Iggy, so sounds like where was that coyote's owner? Sounds I like feel so bad for your neighbors. <laughs> no. First of all, you got this yelly, screamy man who's always just making noise from his basement. Oh, they knew what they were signing up for. Second, if this is a, a guy on drugs standing in his <laughs> driveway holding on to his dog for dear life at two in the morning you're not even gonna ask if i was okay if the coyote attacked nothing put your dog on a damn leash. so this is just, this is your problem this is your fault the coyote ran away it was, <laughs> it was right. totally fine let's do the press conference Presser. S -D -P. the steve dangle press I conference were you in your underwear too? No, I wasn't in my I, underwear. Was your gut out? I was so fucking okay. giving the neighbors a show. Paint in the garage. Yeah, <laughs> I lost fifteen pounds. How dare you? Yeah, you're just trying to show off. I am the body. a fitness model. That's damn right. <laughs> but Deborah next door is like the the boy. Not at again. Uh -huh. Deborah. De oh. By the way, uh, I was so scared. Bill Armstrong has signed an extension with the Coyotes. Congrats to Bill Armstrong, general manager. Of the oh, Coyotes. how long? Uh, we don't know. It says multiple. No, I don't like them. 10.5 times established eight. by the previous conversation. I don't like the coyotes. <laughs> I don't not like the terrifying. Coyotes. It's just they're just weird. Um, so Jesse question. I'm, a um, animal. I'm going to use this as a bounce off. Nick said, how does Travis Kelsey's knee injury affect how the Leafs approach the new season? It doesn't. But Travis Kelsey, I feel bad for anybody who drafted in the first round of their fantasy football draft. Uh, like Justin Fisher did in our SDN yeah, that's fantasy so Way to go, you stupid idiots! Do you guys have any stories you want to share? And happy birthday. From the SDPN fantasy football draft last night, Steve uh, went way off the board with the number three overall pick and drafted Josh Allen. Josh Allen pick. was his first pick. <laughs> Just a spite Drew. I don't... It's, no? It's a, oh, no, the light went in. The light, went oh, in. Okay, okay, okay. the light giveth and the light yeah. taketh away. Uh, listen, this was my first fantasy football uh, draft. Yeah, I don't know football, so my whole goal was to just be a dick to Drew, <laughs> who I have to play in the first week. Mm -hmm. So I drafted four Bills, which is he amazing. loves the Bills. Amazing, <laughs> but you're ruining your own team for the sake of a bit. I didn't know that. <laughs> now, according to Yahoo, I thought I did all right. According to Yahoo, yeah. of all the teams in the league. My team was drafted the best. I got an A plus from Yahoo for the wow. players that I Those picked. Those don't mean anything. Uh, and you know who got like D's and F's? Who? Drew and Jesse. 
There you go. Just I just want to throw plus. that out there. Mm. Could that mean something? Yeah. That the two guys who play fu uh, fantasy football the most are at the bottom of this list. It means you're a dumb shit. <laughs> I can't wait to beat them. Oh, I can't wait. Who do you play? I can't wait play, to win uh, the league. Who do you play this week? Playing Tim Haraney this week. Okay. From the nailing the apex. Tim's got a decent team. He does, but yeah. uh, I'm uh, my I my report card says team. I'm going to win. You. So what are I'm you? Pro what's the projection? Projection is uh, one eighteen oh three to one oh eight forty nine. What, what for in favor of you? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm pretty good versus Tim. Okay. I didn't understand something about our league though. I tried to drop somebody and pick somebody up, but mm -hmm. do I have to have that approved? We have waivers. Yeah, I know so we have waivers. What day is uh, what day is waivers? Oh, we have a day for waivers. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, even know that. So it'll say it'll say uh, when you're picking them up, and you can. There's like bidding, so you have like a hundred dollars for your waiver budget. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what day. Are, I'm not gonna pull it up. I don't know what day our waivers are. It might be uh, today. So wait, do so, I have to pay real money for that? No, oh, it's just it's, team it's budgets. Fake, fake. Oh, fake okay. Budgets. Is yeah. Drew's team's <laughs> name X gone? Give it to you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and Eck refers to uh, a who's a Eckler? Austin. Eckler. Austin Eckler. Is yeah. he good? He's he's a good running back. Yeah. He's a good running back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Probably not. I bet. And by the way, Jesse, who does this bid go to? It's you. So the way the waiver budgets work, you have a hundred dollars. You start the year. Okay. Yeah, our waivers are September eighth. So um, two days. Yeah, the uh, the Friday. Yeah. Um, so you have a hundred dollars in your budget. So that's if two people are claim the same guy. Uh, you can bid like I put fifty dollars to claim this player, but and then if they bid forty dollars, you'll get that player. But okay. then you'll lose fifty dollars from your hundred dollar waiver budget. Is that every week that's refreshed? Yeah, whenever, whenever. No, it's the hundred dollars for the entire season. Oh, so you want to be like bidding a dollar on guys, right? And if you, if you, did you just do something? Yeah, yeah, no, I bid, I bid super low. Okay, yeah, yeah you yeah. want to be bidding like two bucks because I assume nobody is going to be trying claiming these guys, so you can probably not bid anything. Like usually, yeah. I'm like, I just take this guy because nobody else is going to be bidding on them. But you have a hundred dollars for the season in your waiver budget, mm. and then so if um if we pass the September eighth waiver, the guys will, you can just claim them before Sunday. Okay. So you can even just wait till after waivers and just try and select a guy, and he might be there still. Okay. Yeah. Josh I might Allen. do that. Or you can put your waiver bid in and try and get it. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I explained that. No, correctly. no, it did. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. I'm going to kick, um, kick both your asses. So, uh, Jesse, <laughs> questions. First question. Uh, this is from Bobby. I know one of you has. Uh, NHL Bobby says, have you watched Winning Time on HBO? Fucking love I know that it's not completely show. accurate, but it's super well made. Would love to see something similar about Gretzky and the Oilers. Oh, that would be good. That'd be really good. Um, Isn't so Winning Time about Magic Johnson? It's about Magic Johnson yeah, yeah. and about the Bus family who still own um, the Lakers and like when they bought it and how they bought it. They'd all coincided in the same year. Mm. And Larry Bird a little bit too. You get some of his backstory and... It's a it's a great show because it's got like a it's got a very early, late seventies early eighties feel to it. Like they shoot some of it in what looks like Super Eight film, yeah. So it looks like it's from that, and and there's also just a really there are some really dark moments in it, but it's also balanced out by some moments of hilarity. Um, and it's Levity. got a very f kind of fun feel good movement to it. Uh, and this this the cast is amazing. Uh, I can't believe like Adrian Brody is Pat Riley is just. Awesome! I saw he's he a was star in, in that. Yeah. He's yeah, and it's I mean it's the start of Pat Riley's coaching career because he was a player too for the Lakers and how that all happened and and it's uh I think you guys would absolutely love that show. It's sports drama, not all of it's perfectly accurate, but it doesn't need to be. You get the idea. TV so, show, and also the guy looks like Magic Johnson, oh, yeah. the actor, like like has the yeah. Magic's got a great smile. This guy has a freaking like. 10 out of 10 smile, just like Magic. It's crazy. It looks exactly the same. And also, there's um, the guy playing Kareem is spectacular. The dude uh, playing Bird. I've only seen clips. Looks he, like he looks exactly like Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good casting. Yeah, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. Please watch it. And yes, it would be great. Gretzky Oilers, I think even better, would be uh, mid to late 70s Canadians. Love to see a little Ooh. bit of that uh, because that team had some flair and some panache and some style that I think that like the thing about those Lakers is that they, they sort of had that cockiness to them. The Montreal Canadiens, when you go back and you watch that, um, they had all that. Like Guy Lafleur with his crazy 
flying hair and the and and the game was so violent back then it would be fantastic for I'd like HBO. to see I'd like to see the HBO version of the Ken Dryden story which is what Michael Jordan did except way more mundane yeah, uh, like Michael Jordan was the greatest uh, basketball player in the world, and then he retired to go play baseball, and right. then he returned. Ken Dryden was the best goalie in the world, and then he retired to work at a law firm. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then he came back and was the best goalie in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's gonna be weird when we're in our vintage years in our sixties and everything, and they start making these shows about eras like now that we live through oh yeah like i still find it weird when it's like kids who are born in like 2000 2000 and they're like in their 20s now and they look back on like the early uh the mid mid 90s and they think about that like how we thought about the 80s you know when we're oh. kids and like prince and all the movies in the 80s and like all the big pop culture stuff that seems so far off and then, like, they think about the mid-90s like that. I'm like, we're so old. The thing that's th that's messy is that, like, I think that 70s show, the, the period of time between when that show la launched and the 70s is the same as when it launched and now. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. No! Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they it tried like that. to do uh, that '90s show earlier this Netflix did earlier this year. I yeah, think, and I don't think it went well because I, I think, haven't heard much about it. I think that '70s <laughs> show was a time and a place thing. I yeah. don't know. Like they tried it with that '80s show. I actually think that concept could have worked, um, but you have to, you have to be, uh, you have to have a pretty special cast, and they did. And I just think that some, that format is was so good it almost cannibalizes anything else that you would want to jump off on. Let's let's be honest. At least twenty five percent of the reason you like Stranger Things is you, I, I know that band. Well, I love eighties music. What love exactly? Music. Yeah, no, no that's, that's twenty five percent. Things is so much better, but just not the music. Yeah, like, part of it. Part, part of the, the appeal. Yeah, soundtrack like, remind the, you of well, not me. I was too young, but uh, sure. reminds an audience of when they were kids. So, same, Stranger Things is so good overall. It is. It every, is. Everything it is. about it is great. But I'm saying part of the appeal is that. I don't want you to diminish Stranger Things. Well, that's, I'm, that's, well here I am. I Steve, that's like saying here part of the part of the uh, part of the draw with Ted Lasso is the soundtrack, which is also spectacular for Ted. Yeah, Ted and the rest Lasso. of it's shit. It's just the movie. It. It's just the music. Oh, yeah. Soundtrack for Ted Lasso is amazing. Ted Lasso jumped the shark big time. Did it? I didn't see the third season. It's, it's, it was too much for me. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to yuck anyone. It was a yeah. nice balance with the pandemic, but I'm not sure how it plays today. Like, it, it hit at a very dark time. And it was so light that it felt so good. It was like a little dopamine hit. It was know? a correction that we all needed. Yeah, well, because everything was euphoria. It, well, everything... Yeah, what the fuck? Like, every... By the way, can we have a teen drama that's fun again? Like, <laughs> euphoria... What do you mean? Everything is euphoria, or a copy of euphoria, or the other side of that is Riverdale, which is... The most bonkers, crazy. Aliens. There needs to be a documentary done on why they even did Riverdale in the first place and why it went the directions that it went. It's what a ridiculous show. Yeah. It's stupid. It's all too much. Yeah. Man. Anyway. Somebody's clearly not watching The Summer I Turned Pretty. Oh, I like, haven't seen that. Is it good? Like Maddie is. Is it good, Maddie? My wife has watched that show, Maddie. <laughs> and I think less of you now. Is it bad? That you it's, watch it's, that it's show. It's not great. It's not great television. Okay. Well, it's, neither it's was very, Riverdale, but I no, watched but every episode. It's not great television in that it's not prestige television. You know, it's very, the, we're going for baseline and it's going to be uh, baseline entertainment. You know what women are better at than men? Watching a stupid fucking show yeah. and saying, yeah, it's a stupid fucking show. Yeah. With a smile yeah. on their face and enjoying the shit out of it. The yes. original Gossip Girl? Stupid. Oh, so good. Well, it's so good, <laughs> yeah, but stupid, right? Right, it's stupid. stupid. It's, it's okay for a show to just be entertaining. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Four, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. It, and what's the other one with the four? There's four girls, and they're in high school. Sex in the city. No, oh fuck. No, no, they're in high school, and there's like a murder, and someone's trying to murder them. Oh, gee. you know what I'm talking about? No. What's that? It was Pretty so... Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars. Oh, yeah. Okay, PLL? now, I want you to go back and watch PLL and then just watch how they end a scene. Because whenever they end a scene, the camera is pulling away from the four of them mm -hmm. or end an episode, and they're all looking around like... Dude. They do that every mm -hmm. every episode. There's like a scene where they're all like, I'm just going to look random places. It's like the worst I, what show. The it's so bad. Ever made. But ever. you got to watch more of it, right? Please. So bad, it's good. Yeah. Um, housewives are like, I freaking love the housewives now. Oh my God. 
So good. You need to watch some below Netflix deck. has mastered below the great. couples reality shows. Yeah. Like the the ultimatum is fucking ten out of ten. Um <laughs> You're the like, one who you and Gabby are the ones that got me really into reality television. Yeah. Sun, uh, selling Sunset was the, like my gateway. Selling there. Sunset's an, another one where Netflix just hit it out of the park. Like they're they're really good at at making these reality shows. And There's, they know how to like they have uh, the circle as well and the circles um the one where they all live in separate rooms and all that stuff. But they're really good at taking that old MTV format of the real world where you reuse the characters. Yes. So you'll take somebody from one of the reality shows and you'll throw them in the other one. And then you have the whole reality show universe that you're building. And then it's it's fabulous. Who watches Great TV? television. Who what? No, it's not great television. It's streaming. Yeah. It's TV. But that's that's what it is these days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, what else we got, Jesse? What else um, we want to talk about? This is from Tyler Boone. Does Nick Robertson crack the starting lineup? Ooh. If not, is it best interest? Is it in the best interest of both parties to find a trade partner? Uh, no, um, I haven't changed my opinion on this. Well, so I've changed my opinion. I think there's a better chance he makes the team than you think. Uh, this is a team that wants to score goals, and he's going to help them achieve that goal. Um, he's going to have to, I mean, he's going to have to stay healthy, whether he's in the NHL or the minors. Uh, I don't think trading him makes any sense uh, because the team is only going to want him because they think he can be a goal scoring, a goal scoring star for them. And why not keep him and have him be a goal scoring star for you? He was the youngest player drafted in his draft class, which I think was 2019. Also ever. Also, ever. No, I think he's... At the time, he was, actually. Technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get one past me, Jesse Blake. Um, well he's, st- he's still only, like, 21. Yeah. There's no- Why? Why? What's the rush? Just because they rushed him in an extraordinarily unique situation where the Leafs were playing playoff games in August... Uh, doesn't mean he needs to be in the NHL right now. What's wrong with him starting in the AHL, being the Marley's best player, and then when they need a player, they call him up? Yeah. Now, I could yeah. understand why that'd be frustrating to him. I could understand why he would ask for a trade. I also think he would understand that he has not established himself at the NHL level. And 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 there's been reasons for that. There was COVID. There was a broken leg. There was other injuries that have happened if I'm not that have mistaken, been unfair. If frankly. I'm not mistaken, he's looking for his second contract. Um, and yeah, like you're you're gonna want to make some money. Yep. So the best way to make money is to end up on an NHL team. But like I don't know, someone still was willing to offer over a million dollars to Philip Zadina. And that dude has played in the NHL, and he didn't do shit. Mm-hmm. You know? So if if I'm him, I want to be in the NHL. Um, I totally understand that. To me, there's no reason for the Leafs to trade him. The most important thing you said there is that he's 21 years old. And when the season starts, he'll be 22 because he has a birthday in September. But that's, that's right. so incredibly young. He's so young. Like, he shouldn't have had the shots at the NHL that he had. He's 22. And he's an RFA at the end of this season. So this- he is... He's playing for a contract. He's in a contract year. Well, there you go. And so, uh, yeah, again, I totally understand it from his perspective. Uh, Is there anything wrong with having scoring depth, too? Fucking no. I, does anybody it's hate that? bad. Like, if Matt Nyes goes down again and Nick Robertson comes up and do, does a good job, anybody upset about that? No. You know what I fucking hate? What do you fucking when, give me, hate? Give me what you the, You never say that. When, you, the, last, fucking when the last GM here who was in Toronto <laughs> and now his favorite city in the world is Pittsburgh. When he would sit there and say, I'm going to do right by this player and trade them. Travis Dermott should have been a Leaf a lot longer, as just as protection for the defenseman. Alexander Barabanov. What is this thing where, I hope Treliving doesn't do it, but Dubas had the bad habit of, like, he's he's unhappy here. He doesn't get playing time. He wants to go somewhere else so he can, he can play, and I'm going to move him. I got a name for you. Rasmus Sandin. Exact same Why situation. Why was that trade greenlit? He's not, Dubas is not even here now. You know, like that trade, like, listen, Rasmus has got holes in his game. He had a good start in Washington and then his advanced numbers weren't great. Whatever, whatever. The caps aren't good either. Weren't good last year anyway. Rasmus Sandin should still be a Toronto Maple Leaf. He should be fighting for a lineup spot. I understand why they made that trade. Kind of fucking sucks. Kind of fucking sucks. The first round pick that came back, right? Yeah. 
and Gustafson. And Eric Gustafson. And Eric Gustafson. Who they didn't play and then lost. <laughs> It's just I hope we don't get into a similar situation with Nick Robertson. That's that's why it sparked in my mind. I don't want to see him traded um, just because he wants to play. He yeah. is under contract. You have his rights. You do not have to trade him just to do right by a guy. You, you know how you can do right by him is pay him to be a professional hockey player. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully he does well. Those things never come back around. When when did Dubis get the favor because he did right by an the agent? One, the argument, yeah, the yeah. argument is that made Toronto a more appealing free Meh. agent stuff. I mean, no. how many how many things do, does Toronto need to have going for it for it to be appealing? <laughs> I, I don't like it, the that. richest, the most intense fans. Uh, like, what else do you need? Hi, uh, here's fucking everything. Pretty good city I to don't live know. in. <laughs> pretty good country to live in. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I and, and we're like, you know what? No, 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 let us do you the favor. Can you can you do a bit better than fucking everything? Please. <laughs> that GM thing doing a favor for it's it's as much for the agent as it is for the player. I it's, think it's sometimes agent, that's what it is. It's the agent on the phone being like, Hey, you know, I got a guy also who's be a free agent next year, maybe he'll sign with your team and like, Can you do this guy a favor? Can you get him out of here? And the GM's like, Yeah, I'll do you're my buddy, whatever. I, that shit never comes back around. Stop doing it. I think he's a brilliant hockey mind who is superly super easily manipulated. Wow. Kyle what do you think? Yeah. I mean, it should say something that his line in the sand, uh, his I'm a big boy moment was not trading Zach Hyman to the Oilers. <laughs> For a seventh? Fuck. Amen. Because I'm a big boy. Just get the draft pick. The Who price cares? is, no. I would rather You're losing him anyway. nothing. No. Even though all, like, one of my top three favorite things in the entire world is sixth and seventh round picks. I am not going to do it. But I, I think I think a lot of people said, and I get this, is like, why are you helping another team? It's the Oilers. Gives a fuck. They're helping you. They're giving you something yeah. instead of you getting nothing. It's not a help when you get something back. It's not. It's, I'm not helping you when I'm I just, pay for I, I'm, I'm pre-arguing this. Yeah, also, yeah. Ta- very, I think very right. obvious. Am I helping tampering? the store when I pay five bucks for the bag of chips? I think no, there's, I very, there's very little... Chips. Very, very little when you look back on on Dubas's tenure that you can s- sincerely fault him for. There are a few things, though, that I think as, you know, because you can only really look th- at things 2020 hindsight, you know, with a couple of years under your belt. But I think one of the things that is going to come up is uh, I think there people are going to say, even though the pandemic happened, even before the pandemic, everybody wanted them to have lower numbers on the RFAs. Mm-hmm. They wit their... If, if you knock a million or half a million off of all those RFAs, mm-hmm. we don't have any of those discussions, pandemic or no pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. They did make a bet. The bet was wrong. You got to live with that, right? The bet was the cap was going up. The cap didn't go up. And so there's that. Here they are, and they still don't want to take discounts. Well, who could blame them? They it never did, did before. It doesn't come back. So I think, I think in this case, I, I think, yeah, I, I think there were things with Kyle. I think Kyle is an inherently good human being and wants to do right by people. And sometimes that doesn't, that's at loggerheads with what being a sports general manager is. Generally you speaking. You have to be ruthless. I, you know, generally we, speaking. We gave, hold on. We gave yeah. Vegas shit, and we were wrong. We gave Vegas shit because we're like, listen, they're lying to all these players and these agents. People are pissed off. They're signing long-term deals, and Vegas is like, next year, you know what? There's someone shinier than you. We're going to punt them out. Guess what they just did? Won the fucking Stanley Cup. We were wrong for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. And I, they're still champions. It's a yeah. it's a cold fucking take on my part. Cold take to even say that because that's what it is. They they recognized what sports was. They said you're coming in here, you're performing. The second you don't, or the second there's someone better at your position available, you're gone. And it was it was a lot of necessary evils because Bill Foley said something on a show that I'm sure Gary Bettman screamed at him for. They said if there was no cap, how much would you spend? And he mm-hmm. said 130 million. The cap is. L- 85? Less than 85? 83 and a half, I think. Holy shit. He would spend $130 million. He probably came close with, if you look at LTIR. I love Bill Foley, by the way. He's one of my favorite people in hockey. <laughs> want a fucking love cup. him. What a fucking cup. Yeah. Anyway. They don't give you a ring for being a great guy. Uh, last thing. No, they, they sure don't. <laughs> they give you no credit no, for being a great like, guy either. Generally speaking, it's an incredible human trait uh, in the world of business. 
Well, uh, the other thing, remember what happened to Brian Burke when he was in Afghanistan supporting the Canadian soldiers there, but it happened to be July 1st and how much sports writers in this city got into him about that? Mm -hmm. It's free agency. Why aren't you here? Like it's a, you know, there's no reward in sports for being a good guy, unless you're a good guy who also won the cup. Last thing, as I hit the extra, Adam, people have been asking if we're doing uh, pre predictions, previews what? for predictions, previews for Prick the, predictions? For, for the uh, season coming up. Can you I let know. them know that it is indeed happening? Yes, it is happening. But the predictions will happen uh, and be released as they have before. And I know I don't expect anybody to remember this. They happen over Thanksgiving because that's the lead up to the uh, hockey season. So we do them right before. They, they all come out right before that. American Thanksgiving. Ameri no, Canadian. <laughs> Canadian Thanksgiving. Rick. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.